good morning one and all i know you are charged in up after a weekend and you are you are thinking about today's guest who is most experienced and energetic so this is not just a greeting it signifies a hope that the beautiful morning will bring smile on your face and happiness in your life so i wish each one of you a very lovely and beautiful morning and welcome you all to iiebms induction program of 22nd batch i am professor neeraj kumar sathone from placement team iiebm your host for the session as you know that this session will be of 1 hour 15 minutes where first 1 hour will be a knowledge sharing and rest 15 minutes will be for question and answer you can type your questions in the chat box which will be addressed at the end of the session it's not about ideas but it's about making ideas happen and who else can explain it better than our today's guest mr sachin joshi he will talk on it opportunities within manufacturing industry so let me introduce mr sachin sir sachin joshi sir have 28 plus years of experience he is working as a business line manager ctis india atlas copco india limited sir leading a team of more than 25 it professionals responsible for local and global application development and support with atlas copco compressor technique division strong business process knowledge within sales and marketing and manufacturing domain he is responsible for dot net application development and mobile apps also first and second line support for global applications strong functional knowledge towards sales and distribution and production facilities in uh, atlas copco india limited he is responsible also responsible for is operation for one compressor technique business area managing team of it experts from various it domains who are working on the various it projects locally and globally so with this introduction i would like to say sachin sir please proceed further and now over to you hey thanks uh, thanks niraj uh, it was uh, a good introduction i would say uh, so let me let me uh, put few more words before i could uh, really start my presentation so i would not call this as a a delivery session uh, it's more of an interaction and i always take, take this pleasure when i see that i could guide uh, the freshers or the the young generation i must say now because if if i am talking about 20 years of my experience Uh, you could already see my my mustache is turning into into white sir. so yeah, there is nothing uh, to hide upon that and then uh, uh, the way the way industry is revolving or the in, the way industry has revolved it gives a lot of uh, insights when you step into different uh, profiles and then deliver based on your experiences so when you say typically uh, i am an it expert on or an an, an expert within within uh, it domain uh, but then what is i am doing in the in the manufacturing uh, so definitely that's the whole idea of i normally touch base on this topic which people really do not know because they always see the industries like infosys or capgemini or uh, something like wipro nothing wrong about that of course uh, these are two different segments but let's let's see what it it evolves to and i am absolutely okay if anybody has any questions or anything to ask about again having said uh, working for 28 years i will still not call as myself as expert because every day you keep on learning new things so some of your questions may be more intelligent or more uh, i could say uh, specific which i might fail to answer i don't know but uh, the whole idea is to give you a bit more idea and even though i may or may not be able to answer uh, in an at most specific way i'll make sure that you have been guided uh, to to take your career path while you are uh, uh, completing your uh, educational stream and then looking forward to go for a uh, actual career when you talk about career especially looking for your own entrepreneurship uh, activities or maybe uh, working as an as an employee or something like that so that's a brief about me so let me start uh, a presentation because that's normally a preferred way of doing it but believe me this presentation has hardly few few slides so i have kept the session much open in terms of discussing and giving you the experiences which i have learned over a period of time again the idea is not to say how great am i 
they had us to say that okay if you want to become great and if you want to become a leader in your career path uh, you also need to be an your in you also need to be a individual contributor uh, because when you will start contributing people will start look at you they will become a followers and then you will become a leader uh, so i'm going i am also going bit bit philosophical don't take me wrong but it's not really a philosophical discussion as well so let's let's start with the presentation i would say and then uh, uh, let's let's see what it it brings it to you okay so basically as as sir has introduced to me uh, my name is sachin joshi and i'm working as a business line manager now typically it's a very odd uh, designation but every company has a different way of uh, putting the designations based on the infrastructure which company evolved so to make it simplified i would say i am the uh, department head or the or the india operation heads for the information system which is mainly delivering uh, the applications and application support mm -hmm. so what i've thought is that i will run through couple of slides uh, in terms of giving my introduction to give you uh, how my journey was okay so basically if you if you look at my career the way i have started especially uh, so in atlas opco i have completed 26 years uh, people might say <clears throat> i think probably uh, you might not have received another or you might not have got another job in in the industry yeah probably could be a true but then it is not i would i would always say it's not fun when you say i'm keep on changing the jobs every now and then again don't uh, don't take me wrong i'm not really criticizing the people who are changing the job because always uh, i think it's a very typical way of saying change is the only thing which is constantly happening so definitely you should look for a change but while looking for a change you should not give a feeling that you are only looking for a change because your maturity comes when you start establishing yourself and then grooming your expertise and then of course the change uh, definitely makes a sense so having said uh, worked in uh, atlas opo for 26 years i definitely have changed myself into different roles and that was something which i thought make me or made me a little more uh, flexible a little more competent and then of course not really looking for any other company because if i am getting a change which i am really looking forward to uh, why look for a different company because then you have a lot of things you could deliver so i started my journey as a system analyst typically uh, way back i would say in 1995 and the objective was basically uh, to bring a lot of offline systems to online so that was my uh, initial kick start uh, when i joined atlas opco of course before atlas opco i have worked for a couple of uh, companies for around 2 years precisely uh, majorly into again manufacturing unfortunately i landed up into manufacturing uh, more or less i have never thought of going into a service based industry because probably at that point of time uh, whatever was possible uh, i have picked it up uh, then i have changed my role that was my first change after 5 years and i became the it infrastructure manager uh, we are now talking about virtual uh, reality or virtual environment but if you look at my designation at that time was a virtual domain expert uh, typically again from the atlas opo perspective and then i was responsible for a lot of infrastructure activities uh, my mailing system which is lotus notes or which was lotus notes so i have been given a task that uh, this is your area do it uh, so typically karoya moro fortunately uh, the maro never come into the reality so i keep on doing a karo <laughs> and uh, taking over more and more responsibilities seeing what new can be done what value i can bring and that has really evolved me uh, on a different level of people knowing me from the perspective of i'm not really an it expert but i'm the expert who can give them the guidance and allow them to understand the way they work in the it fine i'll go a bit quick uh, on the on the next change which i i could see that uh, i thought okay i have done almost 8 years 9 years of it a core it then i should grow myself into the business functionality and then it was an opportunity for me to again change my profile as crm manager because we were looking for implementation of uh, the customer relationship management which is crm and it was i think a very good opportunity for me because especially <coughs> these areas were really not being touched upon so i take a full lead uh, i have implemented two crm applications one was a very small one and then we jumped into salesforce which is a very renowned platform in the industry 
of course uh, we have currently not using salesforce but salesforce was being used almost for 6 years and then we have changed back again to sap crm because the whole environment was changing into sap crm and then i think uh, i thought okay 6 uh, years again being done into the business processes making people understand making most of the things stable uh, what should be the next uh, change for me and then i took over the responsibility of delivery manager profile which is more towards the global application so i think i would say my first two profiles were little more local and then i thought okay let's bring it my experience at a global level uh, so atlas of co is basically a multinational company we are almost established in uh, i would say more than 90 countries physically present in more than 140 countries so uh, it was definitely an an good good platform for me to scale it up and then see what i can do for my company as a whole so i took over the uh, it delivery uh, profile where i was responsible for the first line and second line support <coughs> Again, that's a perception where people thought support is a shit job. Yeah, I mean, to some extent, yes. But I always see support is the most right job or a right profile to start your IT career because you get exposed to a lot many things which probably you will not if you really go into uh, development straight away. That does not mean you should not. But then given an option, if there's an opportunity to say uh, balance between support and development, I would say pick it up because that's the way you could really start learning upon because somebody might have already developed something for you and then you get a chance to get a grip on that and then start grooming your knowledge. So support gives you a lot, a lot more insight in terms of knowing what's happening around, how are you going to deal with the new change requests or bug fixes or so and so forth, and then ultimately uh, take a shape uh, towards your development activities. So that I did it almost for an year. Uh, and then uh, there was some change in the IT and then the, my, my VP said that uh, we are also looking for an extra responsibility for development activities. If you are okay, we would like to give it to you because you already have a strong knowledge. And that's how I took over the development responsibility. So I was then being designated as IT, delivery manager, uh, development and support both. So it was again an end-to-end -end responsibility. Uh, the team was quite small because we were getting established. Uh, and then it was also an opportunity for me to grow my team. So when I took over the the delivery manager profile, it was a team of around eight people. Uh, and then when I took over an additional responsibility of development, it was three more people got added into my pool. Exactly after two years, uh, uh, we were thinking of really making a team bigger. And then I have been uh, designated with uh, and and department head position of course it was not really uh, just an offering uh, in atlas Opo, we have a different way of working so every time there is a new position comes in you need to apply for it and then you need to prove for it that okay you are still an eligible uh, candidate who can contribute towards the uh, expected profile so it's almost three years now I'm heading a team uh, just to make some corrections, which was again, not a fault of uh, Neeraj sir, but today my team has already uh, standing at 37. So this year we have put a lot of uh, new people in my team and the team is growing. So that was a bit brief on, on myself in terms of uh, how my journey was and then how my journey is. Uh, nothing again to talk about uh, that I've done something great. It was. I think say I would say an opportunity for me in terms of doing the things in the right way or delivering the things in the right way will understand what IT can do for them. And again, specifically the topic says what is the role of IT in the manufacturing or engineering sector? People were having a lot of uh, perceptions and, and appreciation saying that IT just like you you give a desktop or a laptop. We will work and thank you. Bye bye. <clears throat> if something is required, we will call you up. Uh, you fix the network, make them make sure that your data center is perfectly in shape, and thank you. Bye bye. We know everything what to do. We don't need your support, and then uh, we are the experts. Yeah, true. In a way, that was the scenario. But when when things were started becoming more and more digital, uh, I think everybody is talking about digitalization in in last few months of time. But of course, it was always a journey, uh, moving something from manual to semi-manual or semi-computerized, and then gradually moving it to fully computerized system. 
it it gives you lot of insight and it is to look more holistic in terms of what can you contribute because you have an it expertise on the other hand side you will groom yourself and touch base on your functional expertise and if you really make a techno functional combination i think you have a very good chance to stand in the industry whether you stay with the same company or whether you look for a different opportunities i know i think most of you are running in the first semester from a different stream so you have a lot of things to still learn in your career path and then you start delivering uh, so it's always a give and take you learn from your teachers you learn from your professors based on their experience they will share the different uh, knowledges with you or knowledge with you <clears throat> you you nurture that knowledge you you make that knowledge more strong in terms of the academics and then you start using that knowledge to make sure that you deliver it to the industry where you are going to serve or where you are going to work upon so i i i will take this in a bit different way that don't limit yourself that which stream are you working upon honestly i have done my graduation in in commerce it was just because i wanted to do it don't ask me why <laughs> then i then i always have a dream that i will do my post graduation because probably i was the only uh, member in my family uh, who thought of doing a double graduation that time is to call double graduation so i did my uh, post graduation but then i realized i think accounting is something which not really going to make me happy so i have chosen the management as a as a expertise for doing my mcom so it was two years course of course and then i by that time the it boom uh, was started moving around in the market uh, so i said i said okay uh, let's explore and then i took the opportunity and also risk of running these two streams parallelly uh, so i did my post graduation <coughs> from the distance distance learning from mumbai university so i i did not have to go to the colleges every day and then you opt for it in terms of your another career path which was my diploma so definitely it gives me a kind of uh, value over my saving two years of uh, career and then doing the things parallelly fine so that was bit brief uh, about me let's not waste uh, too much of time because the idea is not to talk about who am i and then what great I have done in my career what i was wanting to touch base on you is that if you look at the the organization chart Uh, even though i am a part of manufacturing if you can see uh, we have different verticals so we have a customer center which is sales and marketing we have a distribution center or a product companies as a stream i take care of the india operations which is combination of both we have a architecture landscape and then we have special programs so the team is quite big and if i look at my team currently i'm just touching base on these uh, oxchars just to give you an idea that the team can be as big as what we have today or even bigger than what we have today so at india level i have different uh, verticals which i am responsible for data excellence which is really picking up a speed now nowadays so you can talk about uh, business intelligence or data excellence uh, machine learning and so on and so forth i am responsible for erp which is more towards my production facility then i have few people who are from a diff different expertise so we have categorized them as under team india then i have a web application team and the application support so <clears throat> if you look at the current team says which is 12 plus 12 24 and around 6 30 34 and 37 so uh, i'm already starting at standing at 37 and they are still going to recruit few more so way forward uh, this the, the team will grow close to 70 80 or maybe up to 100 so that's a career path or that's a grow path which probably you could see in a good manufacturing industry where you have a large operations and then when we talk about a manufacturing as a industry it's, it's it doesn't end up only with manufacturing because if a company or if the organization is manufacturing something you also need to go and sell you cannot just produce it and keep it in your backyard and then make sure that your back backyard is getting full of your finished goods so definitely you have two sides of the coin when you say manufacturing industry the stream which manufactures and the stream which sells and that's what uh, if you look at the domain expertise what we have built is this 
The first vertical talks about sales and marketing, where in Atlas of Code term we call as customer centers. The team which faces towards customer, and then ultimately their job is to sell and bring more business so that the manufacturing facilities can produce, and of course give it to the sales and marketing to sell it in the open market. So here we talk about product companies <coughs> and distribution centers. And when I say distribution center, it's more towards logistics. I'm not sure whether you guys have heard of these two terminologies, which is what you call inbound and outbound logistics. To give, you, to give you a very simple example, I think all of you must have visited the hotels uh, on various occasions uh, to eat away or to uh, make a fun. So when you say hotel, uh, any any hotel which is uh, running their show, I will call them as a product company. So their job is to produce food items, but they would need a raw material. Correct, which is nothing but the inbound part of it. So they will buy the raw materials from the from the sh from the shops, or they will have some suppliers who will keep on supplying them the rice, uh, wheat flour, uh, vegetables, and so on and so forth. Of course, the cook or the cooks will then prepare a fantastic food out of it, which is what the production facility. What we can just compare it with. And then the same thing will get delivered on your on your tables, which is nothing but the outbound activity. So the the waiters or the people who are serving you a food, uh, they act as a mediator between you and the kitchen. So you will place an order, the kitchen will accept it, they will prepare it, and the food will come on your on your table. I'm just making these terminologies clear because the next slide uh, we will talk a little more in terms of. How the IT uh, really brings a value when we talk about a manufacturing as a as a whole, and then there are a lot of automations uh, which can be done or which are being done. Again, I'm taking an example of hotel. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you might have seen when you must have visited hotels ten years back, where typically the waiter used to come with a, a with a with a small diary and a and a pen. He used to normally take a order. Um, I'm not really worried about his handwriting as as long as he is able to read that up. But it's always difficult to read what he has written. Uh, and then he used to give that slip to the kitchen and then they used to prepare. And then accordingly, a second copy which remains with him to make sure that he delivers it to the right table. Nowadays, you, you, will, you will see most of the hotels are changing it from a typical uh, a book and pen to a mobile or a mobile app or maybe a device which will allow to take the order so they will start punching it on the on the screen uh, mostly on the mobile <clears throat> and the order will be immediately start seeing in the kitchen where there will be big screens being put it up so that's the transformation of a digitalization process where most of the things which uh, can bring a value so your lead time has gone up uh, gone down sorry a waiter taking an order, walking into the kitchen, giving it, giving a slip, and then and, and the chef or the the staff will start reading it over. Uh, of course, the challenge still remains about the handwriting, but now it's all menu driven. Uh, so you punch in, and then they will get to see exactly the way is being specified in the menu. No more confusion, no more challenges in terms of uh, the handwriting and and so on and so forth. So that's nothing but inbound and outbound logistics. Uh, then we have uh, definitely uh, a team which is being looked after by me, taking care of uh, different applications which are falling either in this domain or in the sales and in, in the production facilities. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether you're getting any noise because there's some work unfortunately going uh, next to my my uh, apartment. So please bear with me. Uh, you might see uh, or might hear a bit of a background noise. So that's the organization. And then you also have people who are playing a role of IT security. You have a project management activities. And then, of course, uh, the system architecture. So the bigger the landscape, <clears throat> these people will have tough uh, role to play because you cannot just work in silos. And then you need to have a collaboration and coordination between cross-border teams. So for example, if something is being developed here, you also need to know the impact on what other systems are going to have it. So there, 
as a system architect will play a role in terms of seeing a bigger picture seeing whether you need an integration whether the data need to be exposed and so on and so forth so basically these people will always work more of a, a people behind the curtains to give you a clear idea and an objective about how your application is going to be sustainable and of course this is not very specifically uh, been seen but uh, in atlas opco we have certain people who are working on a bigger programs for example when salesforce was being implemented it was a global rollout so we had a dedicated team uh, who will take care of the entire end to end deliverables of salesforce similar thing after 6 years when we decided to roll over from salesforce to sap crm uh, which is uh, a very renowned in the industry the same process was being adopted so there are people from the the it team who then form a separate team why because they want to have a full focus they will not do their regular activities and they will only and only focus on the programs which are going to be driven globally or locally that's how the the program team uh, looks like, looks into and then as i said when i blow up the chart at my level uh, as you see i i report to vp at a, at a global level who is in in belgium and then i have a full responsibility of team which is around 30 37 today but as i said another i think by end of by, by end of year we might hit 15 numbers so you could see that even though in a in a traditional manufacturing environment uh, the team is still growing because the way it is evolving every activity which we do in any of the industry needs a support and the application uh, deliverables to make the processes more and more better so this is just to give you an idea that uh, we have a sizable team i think globally we are close to 120 if i'm not wrong and then we are still going to add few more it's a combination of internal and external to make sure that we balance it out so we also do not want to carry an extra liability when we know that the project is going to be short term because recruiting somebody and then saying uh, hey guys uh, we are done uh, look start looking for a job that's not the way atlas copco works so we only make sure that when we recruit the candidate or candidates will have at least next 3 to 5 years of full activity which will make them busy we'll be more than happy of course <laughs> if they stay but that's up to them huh? but then our responsibility is that they should have a career path for at least 5 years uh, where they will have enough of work a kind of a growing platform to learn and deliver now having said this i will go to the next slide uh, which typically gives you an idea about uh, what are we doing when we when we say okay manufacturing so typically uh, somebody might be manufacturing on the, on the shop floor the machines are getting packed is being delivered and the consumers or the end customers will start using it so the next slide will give you a fairly good idea about the entire landscape <clears throat> what you could see and different opportunities while working around and then each of the boxes which we have on the next slide let me just go to that yeah so if you start reading this either from left to right or right to left or top to bottom or, or bottom to top it gives you a fairly decent idea and this is nothing about atlas copco this is in general how the it landscape or i would say the manufacturing landscape will look like and the idea of having this slide uh, really being talked about is to give you absolutely a fairly a decent idea that when you look at your career path you will see there are hundreds and thousands of opportunities probably you could look into and based on that you can start building your expertise either in your academics or when you will start uh, working in the industry uh, you have an option to move cross uh, domain functionalities uh, the way i did initially having 6 7 years or 8 years in four full core it then i jumped into sales and marketing of course not to sell the products but to understand the processes but still uh, touching base on the on the functional side of the it so if you look at typically a, a way manufacturing has been set it up so let's go first from <clears throat> top to bottom where of course for anything to manufacture you will need a raw material so of course every company would then look for 
preferred suppliers who will bring a quality material which will allow to make your quality products <clears throat> and then you will have again the word inbound so common inbound and supplier management is nothing but managing your suppliers making sure that they give you a quality product making sure that they give you a competitive product and when i say competitive more in terms of quality versus the cost so the first opportunity clicks the door here in terms of how can you assess your suppliers what kind of mechanism which you will put it to make sure that you have a clear assessment towards suppliers so supplier tracking supplier assessment you are talking about inventory which is another crucial activity which every manufacturing industry really look forward to have more and more efficiency efficiency because if you build your efficiency managing an inventory you have less blockages in terms of blocking your money and then you use that money more in terms of your production facilities so this is a very strong area where companies are putting lots and lots of efforts to make sure that you have a very strong supplier base again when you say strong supplier base you should not be dependent then you have plan a plan b plan c so you have a preferred supplier 1 2 and 3 again the data comes into the picture so how are you going to manage your data it should be visible you should have a lot of performance parameters which can be seen by one click or maybe in a very traditional way using some excel sheets but again all these mechanisms need to be established and you need to groom them to make it as mature as a management or a senior management is looking forward to of course once the material comes in into you into the premises you will have uh, definitely a production facility which is typically a product company or a production house or or a production facility whatever you call upon with lot of machining to be done or assembly to be done so that from your raw material which is coming from your inbound logistics you will make your finished goods and then you will be in a position to sell it to your end customers when you look at any production you facility or production houses they will have again some limitations because once you produce where are you going to keep it if you start keeping your finished goods on the shop floor you will end up consuming your floor space space only by putting putting the finished products and it will become a challenge for manufacturing the new uh, products so typically then they will look for a separate space not necessary <coughs> a huge space it all depends upon what kind of manufacturing which you do so they will look for outbound logistics which is nothing but in the terminology of atlascope we we'll call, we'll call it as a service center a place where a fully finished product can be put so that you have enough of space for producing your new production so again you have a lot of opportunities here to make these two talking each other in a more systematic way so the stock will get to be seen and so and so forth of course common outbound is nothing but a part of service center where your sales and service organizations will keep on booking the orders and as soon as the order being booked they will know whether you have enough of stock which they can pick it up and then give it to your customer now when i say they it's not going to be sales engineers it's again a mechanism by which uh, the team of service center or outbound logistics will get a proper notification it can be a pro forma invoice or it can be any document which the company follows or it can be a delivery chalan with the specification of which product need to be to be sent out that will be then put on the on the on the truck or a lorry or whatever it could be or maybe a tempo and then it will be sent out to a respective delivery location now again here you have lot of opportunities of tracking those vehicles by way of a gps so if you want to really know whether your travel time uh, is absolutely being uh, seen correctly or the tempo of the truck drivers are not really making uh, an extra time because it might lead uh, to a delivery a late delivery so and so forth you can also think of all these tools which will make 
this process more robust and then you could know exactly where your your machines are lying and so and so forth so typically that's what the outbound logistics talks about uh, customer centers and distributors are the ones where we are going to touch base which are your last consumers so once the material has been shipped out you will ultimately hit to your to your customer base uh, again take an example of if you if if you want to buy let's say a television or a, or a audio system or a mobile for that matter uh, mobile companies are nothing but the product companies who will keep on manufacturing different models the models are being produced based on the various inputs which the sales team will capture it from the market if you if you could remember a mobile phone 10 years back and today i think there's a tremendous change in terms of the offerings which they give like once upon a time the mobile never have a camera and now we are talking about 3 4 5 cameras in a mobile so all these inputs are being captured by sales and marketing based on the market survey and the inputs which will be then passed on to the product company they will do r and d and blah 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 and then they will come out with a product which again will be given to the sales and and marketing to sell it in the market and that's how the whole cycle goes up so ultimately our objective is to make sure that you satisfy your customers making sure that their needs are being fulfilled and then you give a value for money so your product should be product should be competitive customers should not feel that they are paying for nothing so all this entire process what you would see in terms of material coming in from the suppliers and being manufactured and getting sold to the customers cannot work unless you have a a strong it backbone or a strong it support in terms of different applications or automations or iot's i'm using these terms probably just to give you because i think people i mean the students who are from the engineering background probably they will know <clears throat> this terminology is because these are being talked left right center uh, whether the person who is talking whether he is known about the technology or not but people always feel pleasure talking about these technologies by putting big words and now when we say this uh, ladder which is from top to bottom if that can be supported from left to right or right to right to left it all depends upon how you portray your uh, presentation or slides uh, you will ultimately become more and more efficient so typically when we say that okay this cannot work in silos if you see this bar which is talking about integration and master data management is covering the entire box which is being sliced into what different boxes so you need to bring in the it applications which will allow data to sync which is nothing but a master data because if you have a master data being placed at different locations you are tend to miss out a lot of things the data will not be updated correctly and that's the reason master data governance or master data management comes into the picture i don't know whether you could still remember one of my organization chart slide was talking about mdg which is master data governance so we are actually working on a project uh where we are now talking about having a single source of information where all the data when i say all the data it can be right from your supplier your customers your product information your uh, spare part information and then ultimately your customer information will be available centrally at one place which means if anybody wants to use it or if any data need to go from one pocket to another pocket you should not duplicate it and also when i say not to duplicate there will be a full governance being given to make sure that any changes which the master data demands will be managed by a central team so that the reflections of those changes uh, will go to the respective boxes whenever they are going to use it so for example when i say my name is sachin joshi and if i change something in my profile as a as a matter of an example everybody will get to see once the refreshment will take place and that's the very strong uh, platform which most of the companies are investing a lot to make sure that the master data is being managed and then is being given to consume by the respective sales processes production processes so on and so forth the next part is basically a communication because again when we talk about the entire activities which are being handled by 
the company based on the sizes or the volume you will need a very strong communication because otherwise there will be a lot of chaos between communicating uh, to different channels so you need to have a strong mailing application <clears throat> maybe a calendar which is a part of your mailing application i think everybody uh, who is who's a part of audience for sure uh, you are using emails it can be a gmail hotmail or if anybody has any uh, specific uh, email account and then you also have a calendar which is a part of that so if you want to put a reminder uh, i think it's an easy task you just create a reminder and then on the same day uh, or on that day whatever time you have set the system will give you a reminder or maybe a mail whichever facilities your mailing applications are giving it to and then ultimately the most important word is collaboration so make sure that uh, when you are also grooming yourself in terms of your career path and then you then into your professional path you should be a good collaborator because when we say that you all will start your career as an individual contributor obviously you cannot just go and become a manager i think that's absolutely a stupid argument if someone wants to make it up you need to have a solid collaborative uh, capabilities which are associated with a, a good communication uh, capabilities because if you are not a good communicator and a collaborator irrespective which degree you are carrying in your hand you are probably going to have a tough time because then you are not adaptable you are not uh, going to be a part of a team and then you will not really see a kind of support which probably you would be expecting from your team members i'm going also a bit bit diff away from the topic but i think these are the learning which i've learned over a period of time that if you really miss out this factor you will have tough time especially in your initial uh, years of your career path um, uh, you will learn over a period of time but if you really go with this is saying the chances are extremely high and of course uh, <clears throat> the access management and identity management are the key factors because if you are working in a in a bigger domain or in a bigger environment which is more of an it and if you fail to have a right access management and identity management there is a tremendous issue because hackers are going to make your life miserable so a lot of companies are implementing multi factor authentication where the password will not suffice but it will also trigger an otp i don't know whether uh, you people are using any mobile app for doing any of your banking transactions you may or may not be but all these things are being become are the, oh, sorry or the, all these things are become now a part of every banking applications right anything which you do uh, either the app will ask you for some grid numbers which are there on the back of your debit card or credit card or it might trigger or maybe a mail confirmation whichever uh, the way bank has ap applied because at least there is a very rare possibility that you will end up making two mistakes and if you still make it up i think thank you for that <laughs> so basically this digitalization which we are now talking about or which most of us are talking about left right center has lot of advantages but also lots and lots of risk and then if you see that's another career path which you can really groom yourself and become expert in the identity management and access management profile because again when we say my application is exposed to internet because ultimately customers are not part of your office environment neither your suppliers you need to have a secure environment to allow them to log in and also making sure that the information which one customer or one supplier will have should not be seen by other customer or supplier because it brings a competition and then they will <clears throat> they will start playing playing with the data so if you see a core activity of a manufacturing domain where it's very specific more or less common across size will definitely differ, differ, differ because if you have a smaller company uh, these units will become smaller and smaller if you have a bigger companies or bigger uh, uh, manufacturing for facilities these uh, boxes will become bigger and bigger and when i say boxes of course the scale of the operations so the more scale of the operations will be you will have more and more role to play here because the volume will grow so 
one of the toughest challenge for most of the manufacturing companies and that's again a perception where a lot of people will have uh, what hackers will do hackers will always try and attack the financial companies or the banks because they get a money out of them easily but if you look at the statistics which is there on the internet you will see a sizable percentage towards manufacturing where hackers have tried and hacked upon i will not take a name but in a very recent past one of the company in pune has been hacked by a ransomware attack and unfortunately their production server as well as their backup servers are being hacked now it's really stupidity that if somebody is having a backup and that's also being hacked and just imagine if the hackers are demanding let's say 50 million uh, indian rupees you have a very less choice left out or uh, you need to make sure that you have another backup probably which is offshore which you can restore and then work upon so all these things are definitely going to be thought before you implement any of the it processes or it landscape <clears throat> give an in depth thought make sure that either you have a dedicated it expertise which are focusing towards security they should be doing a regular test uh, like penetration test just to give a very funny example uh, when you when you go out of your house you will normally lock the door uh, and the keys are with you so we don't keep on changing our locks every now and then just for the sake of safety because the keys are always with you but just imagine if the keys are virtual which probably hackers have an option to reproduce it and then they can open up your house so when you say digitalization or a digital way of working it should be equally given a weightage towards making sure that they are secure and they'll be always being kept as a secure environments because any small loophole will screw up your system the hackers will then make sure that your whole systems are being collapsed and then you have no other option than to either pay them or look for a massive uh, effort to rebuild your systems definitely these are at least three major i could say uh, areas which i thought in terms of making it more visible that what sort of opportunities of course then when you look at you will have different profiles which will be working under these three major streams and if you again look at on the on the right hand side because these are the applications or these are the uh, infrastructural it environments which will allow the production to work in a most efficient way but ultimately what they will get be seeing as a as a senior management or a top management is by way of reports for example how many productions uh, numbers yeah? let's say how many machines are being produced what is the tack time of the machine whether uh, the tack time can be can be reduced down by bringing more efficiencies whether suppliers are supplying the material on, on time or not how many rejections are we getting so on and so forth so all these reportings are nothing but the outcome of the fantastic applications which you have built or you will be building it to complement the production facilities or the production environments and then they will see it quickly by reports and that's where the reporting and the business intelligence or the data excellence uh, stream is picking up like an hot cake if you see in the market i think uh, people are being highly paid for these profiles and uh, the reason is that since it is becoming more and more digital and the <clears throat> the most unfortunate part which people have started working from home the only and only way is to look at the data and that to case a real time data so that they can take take a quick decisions traditionally people who work from the factories uh, there where they will be daily seeing and and discussing upon the production plans and so on and so forth and again with a lot of limitations because those will go more on the basis of an individual thought process now you have a lot of predictive analysis tools which will allow you to make take the decisions quickly 
and which will be more accurate or at least more likely accurate because it has a lot of evidences uh, historical data to tell you okay uh, for example if it's a month of maybe uh, some products will pick it up because it's a summer vacation so the consumer products will uh, will be getting consumed people will go for uh, vacations so there's a likely possibility that the petrol consumptions will go up i'm just giving a very uh, rough examples to just give you an idea that what are the things which people can make use of by by putting these different applications and then the data will play a role in terms of giving them the right inputs to take the right decisions maybe to give a very simple example i think i'm sure i think everybody must have visited a supermarket you can take either a dmart a star bazaar a big big bazaar or you name anything which is nearby to your your locality <clears throat> you will see there will be always some schemes going upon and when i started going into the shop i always to wonder that uh, what is that which they are doing because it was very at this stage of my career uh, where where i always used to to wonder that how come they give such a fantastic discount which probably a general store or the or the a supermarket a small supermarket next to your building probably is not able to give and then i when i started looking into that and then i realized they have a team who is collecting the data based on the invoicing which is done on a daily basis so there'll be the hundreds and thousands of customers who are buying the material over every day month weeks and so on and so forth and that data is being seen to make the analysis based on what is the pattern at which, at which the data is being consumed uh, sorry the materials are being consumed uh, if it's a festival what is the possibility people will buy more let's say chocolates uh, and then they will create a scenario in terms of offering more discounts because then they will look for a bulk selling so they will be okay to give a discount of 5% but then they will end up saying selling more 20% so their volume is growing even though they are running a little lesser uh, percentage of the margin on each product the work pretty large so that's how the the it is being looked into that how can you bring a volume in terms of your data and that's where the business intelligence or data excellence plays a role then of course you have different applications for managing your document because if you see the way manufacturing industries are driven uh, when the supplier will deliver a material they will come with the delivery challans or the invoices that need to be paid so that will go to the finance department which is not really being shown as a part of but of course the supplier need to be paid off so uh, somebody will have to acknowledge and then the invoice will go to the finance finance will process it out and then the uh, either a check or a, or an eft will will be done to the supplier and then of course similarly when we will or when a company will sell a product to your your customers of course again the same scenario will be applied because for customers uh, the production company or let's say atlas copco is a supplier from whom they are buying the material so the this entire entire reconciliation of the monetary transaction right from buying it to the selling and then again collecting the money is nothing but a part of the strong administrative and accounting systems which again are being supported by different tools which <clears throat> it is responsible for any small failure just imagine that if you cannot reconcile uh, your end to end transaction the company will have a tough challenges because they will not know uh, where the money is being collected right on time if not how much is still outstanding uh, if not how many supplies they need to pay so if they have to pay how much money they need to collect and so on and so forth so i would say when you look at the it opportunities especially in manufacturing there is a lot and lot to implement and give a thought upon and then you are exposed to different uh, processes which manufacturing company uh, looked into typically when you look for an it opportunity in a service based industry uh, again just to take an example or names uh, you can take infosys or capgemini wipro tata technologies they have different verticals where you will be placed upon and then they will be working on the project or projects and it will be a continuous delivery of the application or applications and then you are only being put into a specific domain 
and then you will groom that doesn't mean it, it will not bring the expertise or knowledge but i would say if you ask me honestly if my feedback now suppose suppose if i if i say or if you ask me a question that if i have to look at my career as if i'm starting it after a year or two or maybe and now as a fresher i think initial first years of your career these companies which are offering various services is a good stepping stone because you get to learn a lot you have a flexibility to move or from one project to another project uh, look for different technological uh, stacks uh, you can look for azure uh, microsoft aws i think these are the names you which you which may not be familiar but you can definitely ask the questions better and then adopt those technologies become uh, a power bi expert or a business intelligence or a data scientist or a data engineer and so on and so forth and then gradually look for an opportunity into a product based company or a manufacturing where you have more stability and more willingness to do because there you will be seen as an expert the dependency towards you will be more you will have more respect honestly compared to what you are working in the uh, service based industry of course if you are really at a at a level obviously uh, you will have more roles and responsibilities to play but i would always see uh, the manufacturing is a very good environment to groom and to learn more from it perspective of course as i said initial period of your career i think it's a good opportunity to learn more from the service industries and then gradually shift into a product based company because that's another another thing i will just jump into the next slide uh, that uh, why why are we looking at a product based companies rather than service based companies so where where we talk about uh, service based companies you you will have an ups and downs like for example unfortunately last year and half everybody has suffered with pandemics and then there were a lot of service companies who have suffered a lot in terms of either giving layoffs or putting people on bench because they were dependent towards uh, the other industries it can be majorly manufacturing or the companies from to whom they are serving their services so it's a slow down process because of the pandemic uh, the effect has come ultimately towards the service based companies where the projects had been slowed down a lot of projects were being put on the hold and then if you have people putting on the bench you cannot really sustain for a longer period of time so unfortunately Uh, that's still the same scenario of course you still have couple of years <laughs> to start looking into these aspects but keep that in mind that the sustainability of a industry whether it's a product based company or a service based company matters a lot everything does not boil down to how much salary are you going to get because if you are getting a high salary for next two years and then third year company says such in i think we are running short of the projects probably you will be on a bench or you have to look for a different job <clears throat> it's it's going to be tough because you will be suddenly being looked into that what all other opportunities you can look into the market whereas if you are uh, in, into a manufacturing or a product based company they know exactly what are they doing or what are they going to do upon maybe the salary will be a little lower but then you have a lot of sustainability when you talk about their growth plans and that's what we also believe in at us for that when we recruit people we don't recruit it for the sake of recruiting because we need them right now uh, we recruit them and then we make sure that they are at least being looked after minimum 5 years and then uh, they will start really grooming and delivering their expertise so that's something which i thought i would also bring it as a as a matter of uh, uh, discussion where when you will start looking for your career path uh, you should know exactly which industry to look forward which stream to look forward i think another couple of years you will have a strong focus on digitalization people and the industries will put a lot of efforts to to learn what new thing can be done and it will keep on going upon uh, of course ar mr typically uh, the augmented reality all those things are picking it up because everything is becoming virtual like in our company also we are now talking about Uh, giving a feel to the customer of a virtual tool of atlas copco because typically we have customers who would like to visit the company to see how the facility is what sort of best practices are we talking about uh, how the machines are being tested 
that gives them basically a more confident about the product reliability and so on and so forth. So when we have a restrictions in terms of people walking in, into the factories, uh, uh, we can do this by a virtual reality. So we will actually put up the cameras and the live streaming will be done probably for them to understand the whole facilities and so on and so forth. So, so definitely lots and lots of opportunities are available. You need to look into it in a more uh, open way. Do not restrict yourself saying that it's only uh, companies like uh, uh, Infosys or other ones are, are having an opportunities. If you look at a good manufacturing companies in Pune, I can name few, maybe Eaton, Atlas Copco, Sandvik, Alpha Level. They are investing a lot and they will invest a lot uh, to make sure that more and more IT initiatives are being taken. And that's a bit of a difference which I wanted to touch base more in terms of uh, what is the service base and product base. Maybe I would not call it as a risk factor, but more reality in terms of uh, what could happen if something starts really shaking it around and then how the the companies will look into. For example, like in, in the entire one and a half year of uh, pandemic like right from march uh, last year till today we haven't asked any of the it expert to leave a job because we know for sure that we have things to, to deliver and then we will continue with delivering maybe in a slow pace but it will add a value so that's that's a bit on on that part of the story uh, maybe the next thing which i am not really going to talk much but i think uh, while you are learning your your academics or your your career path uh, it's also equally important to to assess your skills and groom your skills in terms of what are you going to uh, work upon so there's always a difference between the skills and expertise at times in in some industries uh, uh, there will be different weightages given to uh, but i would say especially from the manufacturing perspectives if you have more skills and less expertise and what i mean by that is that uh, Let's say if I take A, B, C, D, E, F as as four or as, as five uh, 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 touch points, I might be expert in in two, but I have the skills in other four. Adds a lot of value because you are uh, showing your willingness to adopt uh, the different or cross domain activities. And uh, typically, when you say that uh, okay, you you have a capabilities. Uh, you can always turn your skill into an expertise. So basically, uh, uh, when you when you look at your career path, especially are we, uh, since we are talking about an induction uh, program, I think it's also equally important to see these angles or these sides, uh, just not by focusing on your academics, that what it will bring a value. And then how do you see that, what you would like to achieve it more from your uh, career point of view? As I said, stream does not really matters. Take an example of me where I'm a, I'm a commerce graduate and I'm surely into IT. I have yes, no sir. clue. Sir, I would like to add here. We have one question actually. You have sure. learning the skills and expertise. So the question is related to skills and expertise and your graduation only. That most of the students are asking, means this is a regular question for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that you are the best person to explain this because most of the students are saying that they are the graduate from non-technical but as the technical is booming high so what is the it means already you are working in that so what mm -hmm. is the prospect for our students who are from non-technical but they want to enter into it sector now what sure do you do? sure uh, definitely i think it's a very uh, right question to ask so so if i let's say take an example of a non-technical i'll just take a, a very uh, random example don't don't take me again wrong let's say a, a person who has completed his become uh, typically accounting now if you look at your opportunities and careers in it as i said it's a techno functional expertise now i being an it expert i know how to write a code but then if i do not have the functional expertise who can explain me what is the logic which i need to build i cannot do that uh, like in atlas Opco, we have an it uh, like I, I i takes care of the uh, application development we have recently develop a consolidated application for accounting consolidation which was something which was missing i would not say missing because we have multiple <coughs> application platforms so when the accounting team has come out with the uh, discussion towards me and my team we said yeah we can build it but then you need to guide me up so don't go with that uh, if you again look at sap 
or any other ERP system which are prevailing in the market, they will look the functional experts. So not necessarily that you will start writing a code. You can still be a technical or a functional expert. So a functional expert will always complement to a technical expertise within IT. And that's what I could see. It's a balance between uh, the non-technical and technical. Of course, you have an option to change your stream. I mean, the way I've done it, uh, I have shifted from a, a commerce background to an IT background. But then you need to go and look for a career courses, either in terms of whichever technology, which industry is in, in demand with. Or it can be a simple tally application, for example, just to give a very vague example. And then you can become a kind of an accountant who will understand the IT, but still having a strong base. I, I hope I'm, I'm able to answer uh, the question. Yes, yes. So I will take one question from Chai sure. So it, Diksha is saying that already you have answered this, but I would like to repeat it if you want to add something on this. Uh, being a finance student, what skills are required for manufacturing sector? so that we can get a good growth in career sure see if you if you look at financial sub sectors you can get a job as a finance financial analyst or a business analyst so you already have a mindset uh, from the finance so you know the numbers better than anybody else correct now when you look at the analytics uh, this is all talking about numbers and the historical data which ultimately gives the management a good perspective so you can choose as a career as a, as a business analyst or a, or a uh, uh, it analyst even that matters in terms of or you can also groom yourself as a business analyst typically to understand the business and then translate it towards it it's a continuous process correct somebody will need something to develop and as i give an example you become a point of contact so you have a top management, you have the IT people, and you become a mediator between IT and business to translate and give them the inputs. So that can another opportunity which has a strong uh, future in, in, in the IT landscape as such. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, also, you have explained that products and services. So we can say mm -hmm. that these are the part of one coin. So if anyone want to be in either product or service so what will be the long pers perspective means for longer duration which one is good and for shorter duration with high growth which part is better means product or service now over to you sir okay i would say if you if you are looking into a service based industry <clears throat> uh, the career is definitely uh, challenging <laughs> now when i say challenging see again it's very simple the service service based industries are serving to somebody Correct. So if that somebody says, I don't need a service, service industry will have a tough time. That's what we have seen in last year, especially when uh, the companies who were buying the services from all these big giants, they said, fine, because of the financial recession, we cannot run our projects. We will slow down. Stop it. And so I would say in your initial career path for first two to three years of time, Services industries are good because you have ample of options to learn, change uh, within the domains, and groom your expertise. And then you will understand probably that which stream has a more potential and value. And then you focus and become expert. Uh, so again, from skills to expertise. And then when you say now you're you're an expert person, and then if you look for a next change, let's say after five years of time, more or less average. And then when you look at a look at from more from the stability point of view, I think there the product based companies are more adding value because they will not invest unnecessarily into the into the manpower unless they see a potential. Secondly, the product based companies will go a bit slower, but they will sustain. So there also you need to be a little more over cautious at which kind of products are they selling it into. It shouldn't be a challenge where a company is selling a very uh, what do you say a short time product and then they will vanish off no then it's a risk from the from the uh, salary perspective honestly since that's another uh, hot topic which always everybody will talk about you will have a bit more salary in service whereas in product bit low because service based industries are mean for making the profits whereas product based companies normally will have their in house it services like the way i work i am a cost center for example when i look at my 37 people 
i cannot generate a revenue or a profit by serving it to my internal stakeholders if i do that it happens huh? because it's not that i can always go zero to zero i will have to give it back to them by way of credit note or i will then give them some value addition which will allow them to work in a more sustainable way and so there are some limitations that company will not offer you as attractive as service based so these are the two different ways of looking into it that doesn't mean the industries are bad it's a scenario which will at times make a little challenging in terms of uh, making you uh, decide that which is the right uh, industry to step in at, at right point of time uh, thank you sir thank you for giving justice to product and service equally uh, sir we are running short of time so i will take two short questions sure, i sure. expect the short answers from your side sure uh, the next question is from nidhi she is saying that uh, how is supply chain and manufacturing interrelated to each other how will they have an impact on each other now oh, wow great i think supply chain is one of the most important uh, domain in the manufacturing and there are tremendous opportunities from the it perspective if you know about lean management six sigma just in time all these concepts would need a solid it applications and then unless you have a strong supply chain your production channels will fail collapse absolutely so the more stronger supply chain you have the more better production facilities will be yes sir thank you very much now the last question from my side already you have covered that highly highly paid profiles are in data management mm -hmm. like already you have covered that yep. highly paid profiles are data management like predictive analysis tool also you have Correct. explained that examples of some retail stores and their data analysis connection like power bi data scientist data data analyst so my question is that uh, do you think that for doing these type of courses which are specially related to this uh, change in the digital era mm -hmm. so it is important that the student must be from the technical background or he is have a general perspective of thing and then he can do it over to absolutely you. absolutely the ability it is not mandatory that you should be getting passed out from the technical background uh, typically let's say if you are doing your your bsc or an mca uh, you can definitely parallelly start looking into these tools see i will tell basically it's a mindset when you look at data mining which is a very generic term we are already doing it every person in the day to day life has a data mining skills now it's matter of how you groom it and how you put it in the reality by taking the help of these tools which are running in the market as sir said it can be power bi it can be tableau it can be click there are different tools so you have a data and then you have a visualization so typically if you say okay i have uh, some money in my pocket i would like to utilize it based on my past experience i will say okay if i put something in in product a and product b i get more satisfaction out of that so it's all there in your mind so definitely for grooming your stream into the data field i will never say that you would need a technical background at all of course it will always compensate but it's not a mandatory to go for a for a that you should always have a technical background as such uh, thank you very much sir thank you for enlightening us with your wisdom and knowledge and thank you very much for giving us two more Uh, means i can summarize this as the support job and function expert these two profiles will help the students to enter into it domain absolutely even even they are from the technical or non technical background so absolutely short note i would like to thank you sir and thank you for giving a brief uh, introduction about yourself and how you enter into this field and how you are continuing this field and one one or two examples i would like to add here that the key is with you and someone take this key and open the lock the way you have explained the uh, conspiracy in data management means in layman language it's really <laughs> so thank you very much with this note i would like to thank you and close this session sir thank you sir and wish all the best to all the students put focus i would only say last sentence that when you are working there are two more, most important thing you which you have to always keep open one is your eyes the other one is your ears if you keep these things open i think nothing like it so with that i will say thank you and it's a nice opportunity for me to to talk to you over over a web thank, thank you, you bye bye thank you sir thank you bye